They assume that you're going to procrastinate, so they only show you what to do in the week. Okay. 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 Okay.
Uh, this B here is the total kinetic energy. This is the translational plus rotational kinetic energy. So we have a torque uh, applied on a cinemeter. Uh, it's transformed into rotational kinetic energy of the mixing drum. So if you know what the moment is, you can figure out, you need to know moment and what? What's work? Force times distance, so it's moment times angle theta, delta theta. So it's an angular distance, which is a rotational angle. Uh, that you can figure out what the velocity is going on. Uh, again, translational kinetic energy of the frame. Uh, the wheels are rotational and translational kinetic energy. We can treat the body as a system, so therefore we don't need to know the reaction forces at the bearing. Uh, so we can basically, how can we relate energies? How can we relate omega and velocity of the wheel? Assuming we're not slipping, B is equal to R omega. And the velocity of the frame has the velocity of the center of the wheel, and then the velocity of this wheel is R omega. So we can basically relate everything together to the kinetic energy of the entire system. So basically what we have is two parts of our kinetic energy, one half mv squared, our old friend, due to translation, and then we have one half ig omega squared. So you can, even if you forget this formula, you know this one, mass comes to I, V goes to omega, X goes to theta, alpha, I mean A goes to alpha, a half goes to a half. So it's as similar, it's just you're replacing it. So simplifications, what options do we have? One is pure translation, in which case omega is zero, so we have one half mv squared. That's what we've been dealing with so far. Pure rotation. We're rotating about point O. Therefore, what's the velocity? So the velocity of point O is zero. The velocity of point G is R omega. And so it's 1 half mv squared, uh, 1 half ig squared. So what we end up with is 1 half m r g omega. That's mass and velocity squared. So you get Ig plus Mr omega squared. Is this more familiar? Your I about center of gravity plus mass times the distance squared. That's your parallel axis theorem. And so only, 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 we it's equal to I O omega squared. This is the mass moment inertia about point O. What is true about point O? It has zero velocity at this instant, which means, what can we use? How, how can we find a point which has zero velocity at an instant? Instant centers. So for instant centers, you can't use them for acceleration, but you can use them for work energy. That makes us happy. <laughs> Right, omega is your angular omega is a lot easier to calculate than alpha, uh, and so what happens if we're rotating about g, the center? Then the r g is zero, and then you have one half i g omega squared, and we end up with the same equation. So your energy is one half i g omega squared if we're rotating about our center. Forces. Work is force times distance. And it's a dot product, because so the force has to be in the same direction as the distance. Uh, and then we have the work of a weight, just like before, work of a spring force. Uh, which you can think of it, you can also think of this as potential energy, which is less likely to get confused. Uh, external forces, some that don't do no work. When we're rolling without slipping, what does the friction force, what work does the friction force do? Zero, why? Because the point of contact, the velocity of the point of contact is zero. So the, this, if we integrate a bunch of zeros, it doesn't move. So the friction force doesn't do any work. The normal force also doesn't do any work. Does gravity do any work? We're rolling horizontally, 
No. So, uh, so basically, normal force. If it's a force is acting at a point that does, but yeah, point that doesn't do any work, we need to uh, we can neglect it. Uh, and internal forces don't work, do any work. Uh, if we had like a pulley with a mass hanging down from a pulley, then the cable that connects the mass to the pulley is an internal force. The tension in the cable is, and so we can omit that in our calculation. So a couple of general plane motion. If we're rotating, then the work from a moment is your moment times delta theta integral from theta one to theta two. For plane motion, what direction is the moment? Out of the board. What direction is theta? Out of the board. Right? So then the dot product just is the product, so life is easy. When, when do you, if we were talking about 3D dynamics, right? So here we have a, here's our thing. Now we can apply a moment like this, right? What happened? Why didn't it rotate? Well, the, the theta is in this direction, and the moment's in this direction, and they're perpendicular. So the dot product is zero. So the moment, just like the forces, it's a dot product. Right? Our force, the work of a force, where did the work of a force go? Order of our force is a dot product. The work of the moment is also a dot product, but in planar motion, the moment and the theta are both in the same direction. So we just have to multiply them. For a constant, then it's just m delta theta. Positive uh, is if the moment and delta theta are in the same direction. You can also use work energy. So uh, we can have potent, sorry. Work energy is initial kinetic plus work one to two is final kinetic. We can also use work energy uh, later. It's a scalar equation. So what do we have here? We have a spring, we have a wheel, a disc that's rotating. It weighs 40 pounds, which means we have to use English units. Uh, but that's OK. We can do it. Uh, we have a foot-pound moment is applied to the spring. This could be like the torque from a motor. Uh, and it has a spring constant of 10 pounds per foot. We're assuming that the spring isn't going to be wound up in, on the disc as we're rotating it. Uh, what we want to do is figure out the angular velocity of the wheel when point G moves a half a foot. So when we roll a half a foot to the right, how fast are we going? So what's acting, what's going on in our system? What forces act on our system? We have a normal force. We have mg. What else is acting on us? The spring. We have a spring. So we have our spring force. What else? Friction. Which direction is friction going? Opposite direction of motion. Opposite direction of motion, which is what? Well, what's going to cause us to rotate? We also have a moment. So what direction is, if we apply a moment like this, oh, it's the, moving the right. bottom of the wheel is going to be moving this way, so the friction force is going to be going to the right. And that's because we have a moment applied here. Because what's going to happen is we apply the moment, it's going to roll to the right, and the spring force we know is always going to be to the left, and so the friction force has to be what's rolling us to the right. So what forces do work? Spring. Our spring force. Friction. friction force doesn't do any work because we're not slipping. 
but the moment is going to be doing work. We stay at the same height, uh, and so F and N aren't doing any work. Uh, should we just go right to work energy? Should we try yeah. to, I mean, I mean, kinetic potential energy plus work? I think that's easier for us to understand. Because for, the work of a spring is always confusing. It's a minus K, S spring, whatever. So can we just zoom ahead to the next thing? And so basically, uh, basically we have kinetic energy one plus potential energy one plus U one to two is equal to kinetic energy two plus potential energy two. So we're sort of jumping ahead to the next lecture because we know what the answer is going to be. Uh, can I get a, can I, can I, and I'm just going to, rather than using T and V, which always gets me confused, because V is velocity, and capital V is, is potential, <laughs> potential energy. I'm still confused. Uh, all right, so we're going to go this way. What's our kinetic energy? One. It's zero. Right, because we're starting at rest. Uh, potential energy one. Which is also a zero. Because it's not moving and it's, the spring is not stretched initially, right? Hopefully. Okay. U one to two. P is in the spring because we don't have any gravity. What? You have to look at the moment for this one. The moment is what's giving us the work. Uh -huh. So what is it? It's the moment times what? Delta theta. So it's theta 2 minus theta 1, and theta 1 is 0. Now we need to figure out what theta 2 is going to be. But we know that the velocity of the center of gravity is equal to what? R times omega. So therefore, x of the center of gravity is equal to what? R times theta. So therefore, theta is equal to, in our case, how far are we moving? 0 0.6 feet. That's a radius of gyration. Uh, 0 0.5 feet over our radius is 0 0.8 feet. I can't do that in my head. We'll just leave it like that. kinetic energy? Well, whenever we see an object, we ask ourselves, does the center of the object move? If the center of the object moves, then we have one half mass times Vg squared. Does it translate? Does it rotate? Is there a change in angle? Yes. And so this is going to be one half Ig times omega Squared. This is from translation. And this is from rotation. So that's our final kinetic energy. Uh, mass is pretty easy to get. What's IG going to be? It's just mass times K squared, where K is the radius of gyration, and we already have Bg is equal to R times omega, 
So this is equal to one half our mass is 40 pounds over 32.2 feet per second squared times VG is what, R? 0 0.8 feet times omega squared plus, and then one half, we both have a half mass, and then our K is 0 0.6 feet times omega squared. So we basically have one half M R squared plus K squared times omega squared. And that would be the parallel axis theorem. Why is it the parallel axis theorem? Because the point where we're, right, the point on the ground has zero velocity because we're rolling without slipping. So it's the parallel axis theorem for the bottom of the wheel because that point has zero velocity. Is so that how we can get our kinetic energy? Uh, potential energy. Well, now we need to figure out what XS is. How far is our spring going to stretch? To do that, well, we need to figure out what's the velocity of the spring. What's the velocity of the spring? What's R omega, what's R? R is the distance from a point with zero velocity to our spring. And so R is 2R, which this distance here is 2R times omega. So therefore, what do we get? The distance our spring stretches is equal to 2R times theta. The top of a wheel moves twice as far as the center of the wheel. And since the spring is attached to the top of the wheel, and so our potential energy is equal to, black doesn't work too well, 1 half times K times xs squared, so it's equal to 1 half our k is 10 pounds per foot, times xs is 2r, wait, but we're, that's going to give us a little bit confusing, 2r, okay, everything else is in theta, right? So this would be 2 times r is 0 0.8 feet times theta, uh, what is theta going to be? Point zero six two five. Uh, 0 0.625. Times 
zero point eight feet squared times zero point six two five. Is uh, everything is squared? Uh, radians of quantity squared, so one half k x squared plus uh, one half, and then we have forty over thirty two point two. 40 pounds over feet per second squared times 0 0.8 feet squared plus 0 0.6 feet squared times omega squared. From here, if things work out right, we get omega is equal to 2.65 radians per second. Uh, which is what we're looking for, the angular velocity of the wheel. How do we find the linear velocity of the wheel? V is equal to r omega, so that's 0 0.8 feet times 2.65 radians per second. Because our brains think more in linear velocity rather than uh, angular velocity. That will give us a feet per second, but we have no starts to be wound around and then we have to, our springs become shorter and therefore become stiffer and we, so we're assuming that the rope is actually much longer and so that we're still winding just the rope up rather than the spring up. Question? Um, why would you solve for KE2 when you were looking for the rotational, you did one half point six. IG equals 0.6. Okay, so this is, the IG is MK squared. Okay. So it's mass times K squared. Okay. 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 I was just being lazy. Okay, K is the radius of the K is the radius of the We're either you're going to give, give an I, you're going to give a common geometry where the I is in the table, or you're going to give the radius of the direction. And I sort of, I didn't, I don't like writing the, by the way, 32 point two, so I sort of factored it out, I would say, I didn't say the time because I didn't. All right. If a rigid body rotates about its center of gravity, its translational kinetic energy is what? Who's the best answer? Yeah. 
So, rigid bar mass m and length l is released from rest in the horizontal position. What's the rod's angular velocity after it's rotated through 90 degrees? We're starting here at rest. What's going to happen when we're going straight down? Useful formulas, I about the center of gravity is 1 12th ml squared. I about an end is 1 3rd ml squared.
we get 1 12th plus 1 half squared is 1. The center, right? 1 12th ml squared plus 1 half L squared. So 1 one quarter plus 1 12th is 1 third. That's how you get 1 third. So then you basically set these, the magnitudes equal, and that's how you get uh, the right answer. All right, now we're actually talking about how this works. Uh, the Sharpie Impact Machine is released from rest when theta is equal to zero, but we're not actually releasing, the actual thing doesn't release from rest when theta is equal to zero. Uh, and so what do we have? We have, here we have what? Here's our potential energy, and then what's going to happen? Well, we have this indicator here that when we let go, nothing happens. All right, something went wrong. Something's wrong. Oh, I see. Now I remember. All right, so things have gotten Why is what happened? What? All right, at this point it should be pointing at theta. But this knob here got messed up. There we go. Okay, now it's actually. So, what happens when you let students try to draw it? It gets creative. So basically what this pin here does is it adjusts this and then so, there we go. So now we can figure out the, f now it's shaking so it's, sh <laughs> all right, there's some problems with this system here. But it's basically pointing at the, it figures out the angle, the final angle you're going to get. Uh, and so basically if you lose any energy when you collide into something down here, then you're not going to be going up as far. So you can measure the angle when you start, you can measure the angle when you end, and you, that's calibrated into joules, and then joules relates to mgh. How much energy you start with versus how, many, how much energy you end with that, delta h. Uh, so we're basically, now we're just trying to figure out how fast are we going. Let it keep going. Okay, this is equal to 90 degrees. It keeps going. So work energy uh, or potential energy, kinetic energy. Uh, see if you can do that. Bunch of work. This shouldn't take too long. Uh, why don't you try doing it as a group just to get started? See if you can get something done. So kinetic energy for this one.
So it's like the rod, the only difference is now we have your uh, MGH. H is now the distance to the center of gravity, which is now 1.25. So your, your MGH is now minus 1.25 MG. And then uh, your I is MK squared. And KA, which means what? What does the little a subscript mean? That's the moment that's moment of inertia about point A, and so they help you out. So what if it wasn't Then you would have to add uh, plus one half. So if you, K if you, I A is equal to one half M K squared plus one half mass, and the distance to the center of gravity is one point two five meters. You don't need the parallel axis theorem because so this yeah this is K G. If we were given K so the subscript tells you where the mass moment of inertia is going to be about. less is in the middle for a sphere more of the mass is in the middle so I disk is going to be larger uh, and that's equal to one half m r squared so it's a race which one's going to win which is going to win that's the question this for the sphere each of mass m and radius r are released from rest after two full turns, which body has a larger angular velocity? Who's going faster, assuming rolling without slipping? This. No. no. Same mass, same radius. Different eyes.
basic equation. B, so we basically have M G H equals what? One half M B squared plus one half I G omega squared. What's omega? Well, we know R omega equals B, so B equals <laughs> omega equals B over R. Right, so we basically have one half mb squared plus one half ig times v over r squared equals mgh. We're trying to solve for b. Which one is going to have a bigger b? Well, b is equal to r omega, which is <laughs> so r is equal to one, isn't it? So which is going to have a larger b or a larger omega? Well, this is the same. So this is the only difference. If I, IG gets bigger, what does that do to B? It gets smaller. Right? Because it's the product is equal to the energy. So as IG goes up, then velocity goes down. So this is asking which one goes faster. Oh. The sphere should go faster. So the sphere should go faster, and so since it's smaller, and so therefore A is the right answer. Right, and we did talk about it before we got there in front of 